Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to do an update on my uh, cosplay with the Yellow Ranger. Uh, I showed you the helmet last time, it was all in one piece, I still needed to sand it. So um, once again I just followed the tutorial at the Hero Tutorials. Um, and I think it's been turned out pretty well. Um, you know, uh, so what I ended up doing is uh, I did take a Dremel to it and cut it in half. It was the scariest part of the whole thing. But uh, once I had it sanded, what I did is I took a, a piece of dental floss and I wrapped it around to where it was straight and I could see, you know, a straight line. I spray painted over top of it because it hadn't been painted yet. So then I took the string off and there I had a nice straight line that I could follow with my Dremel. And if you look, you know, the line that I cut is pretty straight. It wasn't too hard to cut through with the Dremel. So um, that was a good thing. Uh, the painting, I mean, it's painting. Do multiple coats. I did the primer coat um, and followed by the yellow and then some automotive uh, clear coat at the top. Again, just like the Hero Tutorials. Love you guys. Uh, I also did a little bit of detailing on the mask. You might not be able to see it, but everywhere you have these silver lines. I went in with the Dremel and um, made it a little deeper. And then I used a, a paint marker to go in and highlight those. So uh, the rest with the, the teeth and the eyeballs, those are just regular uh, hand painting the nose with acrylic paint. Um, and so then I did the clear coat after painting all of those details. Um, another hard part with this one was the magnet system that I decided to use. So these are the neodymium magnets. You can actually get them from the craft store. I got these from Michaels so that way you don't have to buy them online. But uh, the first try, I tried this small type. But uh, in the end, what you're going to want to use is this larger type here. Uh, the biggest pain in the butt is getting it to stay. So <laughs> with all of these, um, you can, I used multiple things. I tried to use Bondo. I used gobs of hot glue. I used Gorilla Glue when the hot glue didn't work, like if it peeled off, I used the Gorilla Glue to get it on there. Um, and as, as a result, uh, you got the two halves. They come together pretty easily. All one, one, one piece. My head fits in there. It's not too much of a problem. Um, with the ponytail, uh, it doesn't fit, but I think I'll be able to figure something out for that. It's not a big deal. Um, this this mouthpiece down here, what I ended up doing was taking some um, taking a mold of my own mouth. Uh, I can't remember what the name of the product that product is. It's the one that they use to make masks a lot. It's kind of like um, plaster of Paris, but it's in strips. So I did that over my mouth, and I got some air dry clay, pushed it into the mold took it out and made sure that it fit into this part of the helmet, painted it, hot glue gunned it in. Um, so that one, again, I think it turned out pretty well. So that's that's how I did that part. Uh, one of the worst parts was this thing here. Now, I, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out in the end, but um, that took hours and hours of work. So. The first mistake I made is uh, polycarbonate is not the same thing as acrylic. So when you go to Home Depot, pick up a sheet of acrylic, they're going to have a polycarbonate right there with it. Polycarbonate is not going to work. You can't bend it the way that this one's bent. Okay. Um, may maybe if you got really high temperatures you could do it, but I got frustrated and I couldn't do it. Second thing, make sure the piece that you buy is clear. So, I mean, that was my own mistake. It's got it's got a coating on each side, so when you go to pick it up, just peel off a little bit of the coating, make sure that it's actually clear, because um, I accidentally bought one that's uh, for pictures, so it's no glare, but so it, when it's right next to the picture, there's, it's clear. When you have it pulled away, it's frosted. So, 
The last time I went, finally got an actual piece of acrylic. Thinnest one I could find was 0 0.093 inches. Um, and what you want to do is you put that in the oven for about five minutes at 250 degrees. This larger piece right here required a little bit more. But when you take it out, it's going to be kind of floppy. I mean, you'll know right away it'll, it'll be floppy. And um, I went ahead and I actually pushed it right up against the place that I wanted it to be. I was worried maybe it would burn, but um, there weren't any ill effects. So then I went ahead and molded it to the shape. And um, that was the shape. I did have to do a lot of cutting with the Dremel to cut the shapes that I wanted. So this piece is separate from the two on the sides. But uh, I, I think I could have done it with one piece, but I think it might have been harder because it was, uh, you know, it's a pretty big thing. If you get one thing wrong, then it might not fit. Um, the last thing I did, so all of that process with the acrylic, um, I couldn't find any shaded acrylic. It's all clear. So what I did was I bought some, uh, some car from the automotive store car tint and uh, I put it along the acrylic and it's actually a lot harder than you think it is because initially it says to put it on the inside well, with the curve of this uh, putting it on the inside I just had all kinds of bubbles it was it was ridiculous um, I had two different types I this is the darker tint that I ended up going with um, but this one had like a sticky backing and it made it really difficult but I went around the outside just extremely painstakingly slow uh, making sure all the bubbles were out and you can see I mean I had a little tiny little tiny bubble there but you know that's as much work as I put onto that I think I can handle it but uh, I did it along the outside instead of the inside it was a lot easier um, the other type that I had just was a uh, more like almost like a plastic overlay with no sticky stuff on it um, and that one was just too light but it was a lot easier to work with so if you can find one that's the dark tint that you need but it's that kind of plasticky one uh, that that would probably be the easiest thing to do um, so it's really really about done the only thing I want to do is put some padding on the inside so I got the padding done on this piece this is just foam foam board from uh, the craft supply store and that's just so I don't get any I, I mean I sanded the inside but I don't want to get fiberglass on my hand or, my, or on my face so I'm going to do that on this side and on this side and actually the if you look at this one right here this one pokes into your head a lot but I really needed it because it was the whole thing was going to fall apart if I didn't do this um, so I actually bought some sponges from the Home Depot so that I can put that on there and once everything's together I'm hoping it'll clamp real solid so that I can move around maybe, maybe do a stunt which is not going to be anything more than cartwheel um, if I can do that but uh, yeah so I haven't seen too many tutorials on how to make the helmets specifically um, so hopefully this in combination with the hero tutorials, uh, you'll be able to pull something off pretty cool. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, best of luck to everybody. I'm going to be going to Supercon in this cosplay, uh, Supercon in Miami, Florida. It's in the beginning of July. So, um, if you're there, see Yellow Power Ranger, hopefully it's me. Um, unless it looks really bad, then that one's not me. So, thanks very much. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. See you next time.